Good morning and welcome to the Tuesday Morning Devotional. I'm Aubrietta Jones. I am just a couple minutes late this morning. I'm sorry about that. I was reading something and I thought it was interesting uh, and uh, actually about this passage and just lost track of time. So here I am. Welcome to all who are joining us this morning and who will be joining us in later days. It just occurred to me that my announcements I offer oftentimes at the beginning of this devotional are not relevant for those who, who are part of the devotional at a later time, but thank you for bearing with me on that. I see B and Peter have joined us today. Welcome. Glad you are with us. Um, and uh, there are opportunities here at the church. There's Vacation Bible School coming up. The United Methodist Men's Golf Tournament is coming up. This Sunday, we are recognizing our seniors who are graduating, and we are also going to get to hear about the United Methodist Men's Award for the uh, for the seniors, a scholarship for one of our seniors. So it's a big Sunday, and it is also the last Sunday for Nick Garrison. Nick is going to be taking a position at Hot Springs First United Methodist Church. We wish him the absolute best. He and Katie will have some great opportunities because they are making this move, and we are thankful for the mark they have made at First United Methodist Church, Maumelle. So we pray for them. We also pray for Kayla Tullis, who has been hired as the interim director of youth ministries in addition to the other duties that she holds as a part of her other job descriptions. So we're thankful for Kayla's leadership and she will do a great job. And we're thankful that Nick gets this great opportunity and Katie also will be starting her teaching at another school in the Hot Springs area. So uh, keep them in your prayers. And with that, let's go ahead to our devotional. We've been going through 1 Corinthians 15, talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And um, today, last week, we talked about verse 20 through 22. And so I'm going to start with 22 again and just do through 26. Okay. And so uh, 1 Corinthians 15, beginning with the 22nd verse. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ will all be made alive, but each in turn. Christ the first fruits. Then, when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom of God, uh, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. That's our reading for today. I was reading this passage and I was thinking about a sign that was in my hometown there was an overpass I would drive over sometimes, or even as a very small child, I remember this sign. It had a pink background and big black letters, and it said, he's coming back, you know, just like he said he would. Hallelujah. And clearly the he in this sign is Jesus, just like Jesus is the one that's being spoken about in this passage today. And that sign was up for the entirety of my childhood. I went to college on that side of town and lived on that side of town, so I passed it more during my college years. And the sign got more and more worn, and it deteriorated further, and eventually it was taken down, and Jesus still had not returned. And I think many Christians feel doubt or fear that Jesus will not return. We're cynical, we're skeptical, because... We have this idea that there are terrible things that happen, that we watch happen, and that they are signs of Jesus returning, and then Jesus does not return. And because it's been 2,000 years plus, it, it all of these things make people think that Jesus will not return. And so as we as we think about this and as we as we recognize this this reality of doubt within us, we have to understand some things about God. God's timing is not our timing. And 
even though there is discussion about signs and indications that things are changing in scripture, we don't always have the vantage point to understand the meaning of those indications. And what's more, every time that catastrophic things happen, God in Jesus Christ does draw near to us. It's just not drawing near to us in the sense of physically returning to the earth. We haven't seen that yet. We will see that, or perhaps our descendants will see that, but it will happen. Um, it is a core tenet of the Christian faith that, as we say in the old communion liturgy, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And as you heard in this passage today, Christ's return is a sign and not just a sign, but it is the means by which God establishes his victory. Uh, he says that God, uh, that he hands the kingdom over to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. He must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is what God through Jesus Christ is going to do for us. The injustices of the world, the sickness of the world, the, the evils in the world we live in will all be destroyed. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And at that point, there is eternal life for those who put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we believe. This is what we are taught. This is what we struggle to believe in those moments of cynicism and doubt. Sometimes we look around the world and we see that things are so bad. How can they possibly be good again? Well, the answer is Jesus Christ and his promised return. Jesus is returning and he will draw all of the believers to himself and there will be a physical resurrection. And that is the good news in which we stand and by which we are being saved. Thank you all for being a part today, and I hope that I get to see you soon. Let's close in prayer. Holy God, we thank you and praise you because we have been taught that Jesus has died and Jesus has risen and he will return. We pray, God, that you would help us to trust in his return. Help us to live in this life knowing that the powers of evil and death do not have the final say. You have the final say. And at the end of the story, you do win. We pray, God, as we live in the here and now and look toward your future, the future that you have planned for us, we pray that as we look toward that future, you would help us to live as people who belong to what you're going to do next. Help us, God, not to settle for sinking into sin, for sinking into laziness, selfishness, uh, greed, um, unholiness. We pray, God, that you would help us to be so inspired by your grace and so inspired by what you're going to do through Jesus that we have within us a hunger to be like him. We pray that your Holy Spirit would work in our lives and deal with our sins and deal with our shortcomings. Come in and do a work, God, and uh, we, we pray that you would do this for us because we know that you are coming in Jesus Christ, that you are coming again. We know Jesus is coming again to all of us, and we want to be a part of that day when he returns. We want to be ones that share in the glory of the resurrection. We want to be ones that recognize that we are fully and completely saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, and we praise you for your faithfulness and love. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 Have a great week. I will see you later. Bye-bye.